Bob DeAndre had a vision for a station in Nashville, Tennessee. I remember him asking me one day, do you know anybody that would have $300,000? I was jogging. The Lord literally laid on my heart to go and knock on this fellow's door. A generous businessman said, I'll give you a line of credit of that $300,000 you need for that Nashville station. Hi, my name is Brad Ship, and I'll be taking you on a tour of the rich history of WHTN. In 1987, WHTN was purchased from the Harry Christians. Little did we know the real work was about to begin. Let's take a look at some of the issues facing a small television ministry. There were a lot of national Christian ministries that were represented. There was also a lot of home shopping. When we were on the air, we had to holler over the rain. One camera in the doorway, and we were jam-packed in the room. And in order to be on camera, we had to lean out from our seats like that to get out in front of the camera. We took such a lightning strike out there at the uh, transmitter, and we were down about 50% a lot of the time. The thing that you noticed when you, when you walked in the front door was the gaffer's tape that was holding the carpet together. When it would rain, the, it would flood. Flooded. Not only did the water come through the baseboard, but it came through the ceiling. When that water went into the studio, you could actually see puddles on the floor. Mold in the building. It smelled so bad, it was hard sometimes to concentrate. A category 3 tornado. It jumped right over Channel 39. It was a miracle that we weren't hit. I mean, the, the sign outside. Tied into like the size of a, of a paper wipe. We didn't have anything happen to the TV station. It was the, as though the Lord just picked up the tornado, set it over our parking lot, and it picked up and went on with its trail of devastation. The point that we became a 24-hour-a-day Christian TV station, I think, is one of the most exciting times in the history of Channel 39 that I can ever think of. In fact, I can still remember the day. It was Saturday, June 17th in the year 2000, and that was the day that just by an act of faith, we threw out all of those infomercials and we became 24-hour Christian. The viewers really responded and, and really supported us. And within a month, they were giving so much more toward the cause that we didn't miss the income. We decided with Project Jabez we would expand the studio. We knocked down a wall. It was the one time that we were allowed to destroy company property without getting in trouble. We were just believing in faith that even though the clients weren't already there, that God was preparing them and we had to be ready when they came. We started singing that Jefferson Show theme song, we're moving on up. It seemed almost that the building was tailor-made for us. What was done would probably have cost several hundreds of thousands of dollars. We kind of laid down our cameras and microphones for a while and picked up hammers and nails. God just really anointed everybody with what they needed for the time. The cameras that we'd been using for studio cameras were never studio cameras to begin with. They were kind of a high-end uh, consumer little camcorder type thing really. Lost focus a lot. Slowly they started to die. Sometimes it was difficult to get people to look at the correct camera because they never knew which camera was on. The viewers really responded and helped us purchase the new cameras. It was a difference like day and night. We felt like we were in heaven. The new cameras have tally lights. It really has enhanced the look of the station. Now that you've seen where we came from, let's talk about where we're going. God is going to take us to the next level. We are representing God's Word. We are taking the love of God that's represented in His Son, Christ Jesus, and we're broadcasting that. And that deserves to look good. 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 Look good.